Welcome to your D132 to EX8 tracking and kerning. I'm calling it tracking kerning Moravian, but it's kind of tracking and kerning with a little bit of design worked into it and also some bad tracking that we'll deal with on another logo, but I'll call it tracking kerning Moravian. And when you come to coursework, you could go right to the link here and click on it. And if you're logged into Figma or have been recently, it'll open up for you here. And the same routine, when I share a file with you, you're gonna go up here, it'll say view only if you're logged in. If not, you have to log in. And then you can duplicate to your drafts, open it, wait till it opens, double click on it to rename it or use the drop down and choose rename. And just take away last F and copy, put your last name, first initial, or whatever you prefer to put in there. Hit enter. And we have a two page document. We're gonna talk about kerning and tracking a little bit and a little bit of design. So a little bit of review. I used to have letting worked into here, but we're gonna do that separately. We'll talk about more body copy uh, as we get into readability and things like that. So this will be a little more design based. We have two logos. This isn't a logo yet, but we're gonna make it a logo. And then here we have a logo that we're gonna work on that has some tracking that we're gonna improve on. So let's go back to the first page here. We could just go over here, jump on the page. And what I'd like you to do first is change this typeface. This typeface is Inter, which is the Figma default. And I'd like you to change it to Crimson Text. Now there's Crimson Pro and there's Crimson Text. And we're gonna use both of them, but on this page we're gonna use Crimson Text, which is a little more like Garamond. So we're going to use that. So we're just going to type in crimson. And again, you'll see crimson pro, crimson text. Use text on this one. And then I'm going to make it all caps. And if you remember how to make it all caps, then you go into this area where there's properties for text. Go to the three dots. And it has a case changing area here. Sometimes you could use small caps, but they don't have that. So we're just going to use uppercase. And Right now, just so you're aware, it's 64 pixels, which is like 64 point. I'm going to zoom into it just a little bit. I'm going to use Control Plus or Command Plus and zoom into it. And by the way, the background I made pink just so we could see things off to the side. If you wanted to center this on the page, you could use this, just using the arrow right now. Now, this is a basic old style serif font. Crimson Text is a little more old style than Crimson Pro, which has a little more thickness to it. And it's a very nice font. Actually, if we zoom in more, very nice font. Look at that R, beautiful curved leg on it. Just nice little kind of dips here on the, on the serifs. Just a really nice font. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, fix the kerning a little bit. And I even have a, an online little tool you could use to practice kerning. But in here, you might not notice, but you know, if you had to put these letters and line them up yourself, You'd probably go down here, you know, and, and put them a certain distance apart, just like they are there. They're a little distance between the serifs, a little distance between the serifs, a little distance there, almost touching. Now, where it gets harder is where you have a letter like O. Now, where do you line it up? Now, if you just match the distance from the serifs to the letter, it sometimes it's too much. And with something like an O, it should probably overlap into that area a little bit more. And here's even an area with an A and V that sometimes kerning is actually shown with this character, with an AV, because that's usually where the biggest problem of kerning is, because right now they're almost overlapping, but it still looks like there's a gap of space. And sometimes that happens with AVs or any kind of A and any character going away from it or something. It creates like a weird gap. So to fix that, and I, we might have used this before, you could just put your cursor there and you could see that they're almost overlapping already. But to increase that, if you just use your cursor, you don't highlight anything and you go down to the letter spacing. And if you go negative percent, it'll pull everything over. I'm going to go negative, maybe like negative 10%. I'll go back here, negative 10%. You could type it in too. And that just brings it over a little bit more. There's where it was over there. Now it just looks a little more natural bring it over. Maybe even uh, there's 13. Even 13 isn't bad. Actually, let me zoom out. You want to zoom out a little bit. That looks a little better. There's less of a gap there. And even as we zoom in here, there's a little bit of a gap. So let's see what we could do here. I'm going to start here because this will bring this side of the type over this way. So I'm going to go on here to the letter spacing. Just bring it over a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, maybe five. 5% maybe, I think is all we need there. 
AB6. And then same thing here, I'll, do, I'll bring that over. Same thing here, I'll bring that over a little bit closer to the M in between that negative space that's between the O and the M. And I'll probably do the same. I'll try to get it to like six. And that looks good. And I think that looks good. So just a little kerning. Now kerning is usually only used for corrective purposes. You're not going to do it to design with, but sometimes there's a font like Crimson Text, sometimes like Garamon, where the A's and the V's and the O's, they don't line up perfectly and you'll tweak the kerning a little bit. Sometimes you don't have to. There's some fonts where you don't have to, but in this one that helped a little bit. So this looks a little better and that looks a little better. Now that's kerning. Now that's between pairs of letters. Now we're going to do something else here. I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to just click on it. Now you could duplicate it or if you hold your Alt key, you could drag down on it and copy it. If you ever have a problem doing that, you could always do edit copy, edit paste, uh, control C, control V, or you can even do this. If you had any problem doing that, you could click on this and go over here and go edit and duplicate, which is command D or control D. Oh, I have to have it selected to duplicate, so let me do that again. I'll go over here and I'll go edit, duplicate, and it made a copy. Now, you may not see it, it even told you down here, it, made a duplicate but they're over here so it's right on top so let me move it and there it is and I'm just gonna double click in here and type college now I'm not holding my shift key I already have it in all caps when you use that setting it's gonna keep typing in caps no matter what you do now right now let's check this out we're gonna go in between here now everything now has a minus six on it so I'm gonna highlight this and just actually put everything back to zero and make it normal again and even if you can't, just double click here and put zero. So it kind of did everything in that minus six when we did that. So now it looks a little more, uh, a little more normal. Everything looked a little too tight. Now, if we were going to make this into a logo, just with Moravian in college, and without even changing the font, uh, one thing we could do to make it look more like a logo is bring that up close and, and have them kind of work together, and even make this. Uh, the same width on either side so they kind of make like a little box and one way you could do that is using your scale tool grabbing the corner now notice that's under the arrow use the scale tool and I'll just grab and drag diagonally and make it about the same width and then go off of this tool go back to move now you can see it made that like 75 pixels high this is still 64 and it's really bringing a lot more attention to college now where it should bring more attention to Moravian. Now, one thing you can do, and one thing you'll see being done, instead of just making that larger so they have the same width, is actually make this smaller again. This, You could go back and put this at 64, just like the other one, and maybe even a little bit smaller. I'll put it at 64 right now. But you could do that, and one way to get the same width is by adjusting the tracking or letter spacing. And letter spacing is just going to put space between the letters. And to do that, we just go over here into the setting here for letter spacing. Go right to the left of it and just move to the right. And just stretch it out so it's the same width. And even if you want this a little smaller, this is 64. This is 64. If you'd want to go down, maybe double click here and put 54. And I'll do the same thing. I'll spread it out again. I'll spread out the tracking or the letter spacing. Tracking is more of the printing term. Letter spacing, you'll see more in Word and other programs. That makes more sense. Uh, people are getting away from some of those print terms, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff for the web. You'll see line height and letter spacing and things like that, which kind of makes sense. I'm going to spread this out even more. Now, it's starting to look more like a logo because now Moravian is standing out. College is secondary. And even though they're the same font, this stands out and this recedes a little. And why does it recede? Well, A, it's smaller and B, the tracking is spread out and it looks lighter. To your eye, this is more dense and this is lighter. So now if you just move this down just a little, you wanna keep them close in proximity so they look like they belong together. You don't wanna have this down there. They don't look like a logo. They might need a border or something. And by the way, uh, if you use something, I'll just make a little rectangle here, a little, little box, a little tiny box. Doing something like that, Sometimes people think and you know it works like an underline or it, it's a divider and actually it's a divider but it's bringing it together so even though there's space in between them it's actually making them work together now it's a little light right now let me darken that up a little bit I'll just come down here 
and make it a little darker gray. Now that actually goes together. So sometimes a border or a stroke like that uh, can make things work together. So it's not just a divider, but sometimes it unites. Just like they say fences make good neighbors. Here the fence is bringing them together. There's a relationship from each side to that line that looks kind of nice. And you don't need that. I, you could take that away too. We could just use proximity here and bring this up real close and just do that. And that's even cleaner like that. So that's one way to do it. That's one way to kind of turn two pieces of text into a logo, even the same typeface without even changing one to bold and one to lighter or anything like that. Uh, just by doing that, just by tracking this out, increasing the letter spacing, lightens it up. And by bringing them close together, they have a relationship. They have kind of a proximity to each other and they form this kind of rectangular shape which kind of makes a logo. Now another thing we could do, I'm gonna copy this now. I'm gonna hold my option key and however you want to do it, I'll copy another one down here. And I'll try it with a different typeface. Now I'm gonna go put it into Roboto Slab. Now you might think, well Roboto Slab, well why would we use that? Well it's something a little more modern. This is a little more traditional, it's old style. Uh, maybe with sports and things like that, you might want to have it a little more modern. So we're going to put this in Roboto Slab. And I'll, I'll type RO, and there's lots of different Robotos. There's Roboto Slab. And maybe I'll make it bold. Bold Roboto Slab. I'm not sure how any of this tracking is in here. We could go back and let's see if we could highlight it all. And it says mixed. So I'm just going to go in here and see if we could. I don't know how we put it back to zero. I'll put zero in here. Oh, that goes back. So if it's ever mixed and you want to take it out, you could double click in there and just replace mixed with zero. Now it's back to the way it was. And you can see this typeface, the Roboto Slab, but we're not seeing the issue with the A and V, and we're not even seeing any issue with the O. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep this as the main typeface here at 64, and then I'll copy it. And again, I'll hold Option or Alt, drag it down, and I'll double click in here and just type College. And again, instead of doing what we did there, maybe we want to get higher contrast. And we could take this typeface and go into Roboto Slab and say, well, let's use the light version. And we could, and we can make it smaller, but we have very fine lines in there. What we might want to do, instead of using the same type family and using a bold version and a light version, is using a contrasting font. This is a very heavy, slabby kind of typeface. To find something that's very different from it, instead of using a light slabby typeface, is maybe just using a light typeface. So I'm going to go down here. Instead of Roboto Slab, I'm going to use just Roboto, which is a sans serif font. So I'm going to find Roboto. There it is. And there's Roboto Light. Now, this is 64. This is 64. If we did the same thing as we did there, we had it like 54. Maybe I'll even go down to 48. Make it smaller. And again, do the same thing. Let's take this and spread it out and do something like that. Now we have nice high contrast. We have high contrast between the bold and the light. We have high contrast between the slabby and the plain, which is nice to do. And this is very light because of the tracking as well. In fact, we might even want to go a little bit smaller. You might even want to take it down to something like 40, even 36 and spread it out. Now, one thing you want to be careful of when you start spreading this out and getting that small is, you know, you're getting really fine lines in there. If you get really small, using a light typeface is going to be hard to see. So at some point you might want to say, well, if it's going to get that small, I might want to go from light and just use like a regular. And that may be enough contrast between those, especially at small sizes. If you just zoom out and say, oh, will it look like that? And, you know, e even at this size I could maybe even go smaller take it to 32 and spread it out so now that it's not so light I could even spread it out even more and get more contrast and get more of a contrast between the bold and the light it still has a nice look to it you know this looks like its own little kind of bar underline below it if, if you squint your eyes it has kind of uh, you know this kind of look to it it almost has kind of like a gray bar under it like that so it, has that kind of look with this light typeface under it. So we created a logo just by tracking it out and making it smaller. And again, a couple things to keep in mind, as you track it out a lot and it's a very small typeface, make sure you don't go too light with it. And that's the thing with a typeface like this. They have very fine lines in there, you know, in the O's and these areas here that get very fine. But by using a regular instead of a light here, you still have a lot of high contrast between them and it still looks good. And you could still put a, a, a rule between them. You could do anything you want. 
So I just wanted to point that out. So tracking and kerning. Kerning is for corrective. Tracking a lot of time is for design, especially when you're tracking out. Uh, it, it gives a lighter look, especially to shorter words. College was shorter than Moravian, so we had to spread it out to make it the same width. Now, let me show you something, and I'll keep going with this video so we don't have to do two videos. Uh, on page two, this is a real logo. I forget where I found it. It was in some like township newsletter or something, and that's why it doesn't look perfect because I think I scanned it or something or took a picture of it. This is Heinzelman Funeral Home. Now, it's a very long word, Pennsylvania Dutch name Heinzelman, and would be more common around Lehigh Valley area probably than Warren County. But it's in an italic typeface, bold italic, and then it has funeral home in all caps. Then it has ink in italic, all caps with a dot, and then it has this weird line here. And not to criticize the logo, but it's not a very pleasant looking logo. And why? Well, I don't know what these lines are. It's supposed to be a casket. I don't know what they are. But they just kind of fill up space and connect the ink, and it brings a lot more attention to the ink. And let me just show you something as we're looking at this. I'm going to take this same Heinzelman text here. This is just an inter. And I'll try to match this. And I, I, it could be Garamond. It could be Crimson Pro. I'm going to put it in Crimson Pro because I think the bold italic will look pretty much the same. So let me change it from inter to Crimson Pro. Now we used Crimson Text before. This is Crimson Pro, which is a little heavier. This is the regular weight. Let me change it to Bold Italic. And they do break up the kind of standard typefaces with the italic in two groups here. So I'll use Bold Italic. And you can see by the Z, it's very similar. It's a very similar look to it. Now mine is closer together. Now it's very dense looking with this bold. There's a lot of curly lines in here. In fact, uh, what I want to point out is, is why would you take a long name and spread out the tracking? It's already long. Why would you make it wider? There's no reason to. So if you ever have a long name that's hard to spell, A, don't make it wider by increasing the tracking, by, you know, putting extra space between the letters. It just makes it harder to read. And it's a name that's not very easy to spell. If you had to go spell it, you'd be like, well, is it H-E-I-E? -I -I you know what I mean? It's not a very common name. And even using a italic typeface or an italic typeface can make it harder to read, uh, especially a name that's not very common. So what you might want to do, or what I would suggest doing here, if I was going to kind of revamp this logo a little bit and use some better typographic properties with it, would be take this out of being bold italic, because it just makes it a little harder to read with all the curls. Uh, usually the curls of the italic make it stand out from other stuff, but on its own, you don't need it. You can just put it in a bold or maybe even something a little lighter, maybe a semi-bold. So I'll just put it in semi-bold. Now it's nice and clean and easy to read. And then I want to put funeral home in here. Now, putting things in all caps doesn't necessarily make it easier to read, especially in a serif font. So you could put it in a plain font, but I'm going to keep it in the serif. But let's do what they did there. Let's contrast the italic and the regular. Instead, let's make the italic underneath. So I'm going to double click here and type in Funeral Home. And I'll even put Funeral Home Inc. Because why, why have it its own separate area? It just brings attention to it. I'll put in my H there. So I have Funeral Home Inc. Now, of course, this doesn't look like a logo. But what if I put it in just a regular italic? Just italic. And again, they're competing with each other. What if I made it real small? What if I took it half the size, put it down to 36, and put it here? Already, that looks nicer. It already looks easier to read. It's nicer, it's cleaner in two lines than what's going on up there with all this stuff and spread out and then funeral home and cap spread out and then ink kind of jammed in there and then these thick lines in here, which are actually thicker than the letters in here. Now, if you want to put a line in here, that's fine. You can go here and take a line. Now, if you use the line tool, I recommend you're going to drag it, but also drag it and then hold shift because then it'll stay straight. And then when you're done, you could increase the thickness a little bit, but you wouldn't want the thickness any thicker than any of the text. You wouldn't want a big, thick line like that. You would want something that's as thick as the lines in here. So I'd want to go back here on this and take it down to like one, maybe two, or something in between. Even two right there works okay. And we could do that thing where it acts like a divider and a uniter. 
I could bring this down, bring this up there. Now they have a relationship to each other. They're both related to the line. The line is like a connector for both of them, makes them work together. Kind of what they're trying to do here, but it, they were more trying to fill up the negative space with that thing. And it doesn't really sit in there nicely. And ink, even ink being an italic, doesn't make any sense. But here, funeral home ink works nice. Uh, I don't know where I'd want to put ink separate. I wouldn't want to put ink separate. Matter of fact, a lot of times a logo doesn't have to have ink in there. Even if their name is ink, even if the you know the full corporate name is Funeral Home Ink, you don't always have to put that in your logo. But if you do, then just put it in like this, comma, ink, period. And that works fine. Now, you can use the line. You don't have to have the line. Uh, you could even do something like this. Bring this up a little, little tighter, not too close, and maybe do something like that or take the line out altogether. Because you don't want it to underline like that. You already have, I just want to point this out, you already have a very nice baseline with serif fonts. Serif fonts have a baseline. They have serifs on the bottom, so they create their own line. You don't need to go in here and be bringing a line in there. Why would you do that? Uh, maybe if you needed some kind of separator or uniter, you can. But even just doing this, even bringing that to there, and maybe making it a little bit smaller, maybe making it like 32, then you could do something where it kind of has some movement to it, where it's kind of starts up here and moves down a little bit. Then you don't really need a line. I mean, it could work like a logo like that. Why couldn't that work? Um, you could even do it over that way, but it, sometimes, it, sometimes logos look better going top to bottom, left to right. So because there's a capital H here, you know, that creates some imbalance over here and then this creates some balance over here so it works like that so you could work it with a line you could take this away and do something like that and put a line in there but make sure you have enough division not too close like that because then you're creating a little gap in there you want to create even division between it and sometimes because you're using upper and lower case here the line helps out a little bit but here I don't even know if we need it we could use it we could take it out Either way, that certainly looks better. Even if you centered it, you could certainly center it like that. That's a better looking logo, a cleaner logo. This looks messy and hard to read. This looks cleaner and has nicer white space around it. So I just want to point that out. Again, here's an example of bad tracking. Why track out a wide word? No reason to do it. Uh, and, and no reason to put it in italic if it's a big, long word. It's going to get a lot of attention, and it's not even a real common name. So you don't have to put it in bold and italic and spread it out and do all these things that make it harder to read. Put it like this. Make it easy to read, and then put Funeral Home Ink in a light italic that flows really nicely underneath and has a different kind of look. So your contrast here is a semi-bold font in a regular typeface, very big because it's a long word, and then Funeral Home Ink smaller underneath. And, you, you know, you could center these two. Let's make sure they're centered okay. That's centered. Uh, looks off-center a little bit, I guess because of the ink a little bit. But that's certainly a nicer looking logo than what's going on here. So just wanted to point that out. So that's all you have to do for EX8. We're going to be doing more with readability and body copy and stuff like that. So you learn how to design well, not just for logos, but for all kinds of text. No matter what you're doing, resumes, anything. Uh, we're going to be focusing on that more, and we're also going to be doing some font IDs and things like that. But just wanted to point this out, uh, kerning and tracking. Uh, since we have done a little bit of it, I wanted to do a little more just to show you in a design sense of uh, what tracking can do here to kind of make it look like a logo and here to make it look like a logo, to lighten it up and to heighten the contrast and even to heighten the contrast even where here it's a little more subtle the differences are subtle but it's very united because they're the same typeface here with different typefaces we're really kind of highlighting the contrast even more and then here you know why make that stand out make it wide and make it italic you know, italic is meant to flow together almost like a script font so so why spread them apart don't ever spread apart please Please, I beg of you, don't ever spread apart italic characters because it breaks what they're meant to do. It's like if you took a script font and spread it out. Why would you do that? They're meant to kind of connect almost like calligraphy. So bring them together if you're going to put them in italic, just like down here. Look how nice they flow together. Look at that. Look at how nice these letters flow. They're meant to flow. It's meant to go from here to the little curls. The little curls are, are meant to have your eye flow to the next letter. That's the whole point. Why... 
why in God's name would you, would you spread that out? Uh, keep it together. And, you know, serif fonts look really nice together. Look how they kind of fit in these little nooks. So even a, a semi-bold or regular typeface, they're really nice and easy to read. And in just in a, in a limited number of text down here, this is nice and easy to read too. And just with a nice little stroke down here, not a big thick stroke like this, a nice thin stroke, uh, kind of that, that mirrors what we're doing here, kind of works as a divider. So just want to point that out for, for design sense, for typography sense, we'll be doing that more and more throughout the semester. So for that exercise, just kind of do this, make it look good for God's sakes. Uh, and up here, your two logos here with Moravian that we just created out of text. We didn't have to draw anything or do anything. Just basic crimson text, Roboto slab, Roboto regular, first light and then regular, and that's it. When you're done, you can share it and copy the link and then just go back to coursework, go into the tracking kerning Moravian exercise and go down to add comment and insert a link, paste it, new window, make sure it opens in a new window, and that's it. That's all you have to do for that exercise, but just a quick little review of some tracking and kerning, some design aspects that we're working with, design principles a little bit. Unity here, they're using the same typeface. Contrast, we're kind of spreading this out, making it smaller here. Contrast, this is bolder, this is lighter, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about design principles yet, but that's what we're doing here, and we're, we're using some of these typographic tools uh, for, for the good, and not just because for the bad here <laughs> we're taking away the bad and we're using it for good so that's what we're doing in ex8 tracking kerning moravian